Welcome to another episode in the Introduction to Memory Forensics series. In this video, we're going to talk about baselining as it relates to memory forensics. Now the concept is pretty simple. Let's pretend that you're an enterprise that uses a gold image for your workstations. And upon creation of that image, let's say that you happen to acquire memory from that known good configuration and save it away for a rainy day. Then at some point in the future, you get a phone call or maybe a ticket and the user says, hey, there's something not right with my system. And of course you say, well, what exactly is wrong? And they say, well, I, I don't know. I was using the internet and then I clicked on something and then all of a sudden I saw this little window pop up and it went away and I really don't know what's wrong. Of course, we've all been there, right? Find evil. And of course you ask the questions, don't get a lot of information and your job is just to magically determine what's wrong and figure out everything and save the day. Well, per normal triage practices, probably one of the first things you're going to do, at least hopefully, is acquire memory from that system. Suppose for a moment that there will be some magical way to automatically compare the memory from the gold image that you already took to this potentially compromised system's memory and just show the outliers. In other words, show what exists only on the compromised system but not on the known good system. Sounds useful, right? Well, lucky for us, there are a trio of volatility plugins that can be used to perform this exact task. They are Process BL, Service BL, and Driver BL. And just based upon the name alone, it should be quite obvious as to the purpose of each. In the next section of the video, we'll fire up volatility on our SIFT workstation and compare two Windows 10 images, one of which is clean and the other not so clean. I think you'll be amazed at how easy it is to find evil, or at least to find things that would warrant further investigation. Once we develop a few leads, we'll quickly take a look at a few other handy plugins that can help us identify the malware. So let's get started. All right, so as you can see here, we have two images, clean.raw and infected.raw, taken from the same virtual machine. Clean, of course, was taken right after it was built and infected was taken after it was infected with real malware. First up, let's go ahead and take a look at the correct profile that we're going to need to use to analyze the clean or infected.raw samples. We'll use KDBG scan, which is a little bit more capable and accurate than image info. And you'll see this first stanza here. We'll get each one of these for every profile installed on the system, but really all we care about is this build string here, which as you can see is 17763. That's what we need to know to determine the correct profile to use. In this case, I am not using the volatility that came with the SIFT workstation, but as you can see, I've cloned from the GitHub repo the newest version. And if I look at the installed profiles, you'll notice that there is a 17763 profile installed, but as of the time of this recording, that profile was not present within the volatility version on the SIFT workstation. Additionally, you'll notice that this was volatility version 2.6.1, which again is the newest as of the recording of this video. So now let's specify the infected image the profile that we just learned, which is again, 17763. And now we're going to use our first plugin, which is process baseline or process BL. And if we do a dash H, we'll see the help associated with it. And as you can see, there are a lot of options, but really we're going to focus on these bottom ones. Starting with the dash capital B, which specifies our baseline image, which is our clean image. And then we have a dash capital K or dash capital U for known or unknown. So in other words, we can tell the plugin only to specify what is known or what is unknown. Of course, most likely we're going to be interested in what is unknown. So let's go ahead and specify the base image of clean.raw, and then we'll use the dash capital U to show us only unknown. And then I'm going to take standard error and direct it to dev null, because it's not uncommon to see issues when volatility processes this. You'll get errors here and again, but I don't want to see those on screen for the sake of clarity. 
and immediately you'll notice these processes which did not appear in the baseline image and this one looks a little odd because it's running out of the root of the user folder as is the one at the bottom and then sandwiched in between we also have an svc host.exe process which is interesting because you'll notice the parent PID is 6172 which is the wuauclDT.exe file so that's a little odd because the parent should be, as we know, services.exe for a valid SVC host.exe process. So immediately we see some things that we could probably pull some strings on and, and take a closer look at. But let's go ahead and take a look at our second baseline plugin, which in this case is going to be service BL. The options are exactly the same, so I'll just repeat the command. And what you'll see on screen are the services that were not present in the clean memory image. Now that does not mean that all of these are evil. In fact, none of them may be evil. But this gives us something to look at. We would want to check each one of these and not just depend on the name, but actually check each one and verify that they are legit. Don't just assume because it's named correctly that it is in fact correct. That may not be the case. So lastly, we're going to take a look at our third plugin, and that's going to be our driver BL plugin. But we're actually not going to see anything here because this particular malware, which we'll determine a little bit later on to be cut well, does not install any kind of malicious driver, at least not this variant of it. So we're actually not going to get any output here. But if we ran it, it's the exact same usage as the other two plugins, and we would see any of those drivers located here, which again, doesn't necessarily mean evil, but it means this is an outlier. This is something that has been installed since that base image was taken, since the clean image was taken. So in that case, we would want to look at those particular drivers to rule them out and make sure that they were all legit. So those are our three baseline plugins. Again, process BL, service BL, and driver BL. We use the dash capital B and then the dash capital U option with each. So now, what if we wanted to take this a step further? As you can see, we have these three PIDs of interest here. 6172, 2300, and 8988. That was from our original process BL plugin. And those, of course, are the parent PIDs. So, in real life, if I was going to take this a little further, I would probably go ahead and run another plugin with volatility, even something as simple as PSList, and we'll grep for that 1868 PID. And when we do, you'll notice that actually is explorer.exe, meaning the parent of those malicious processes, WUAUCLDT and NOBFUDYCOMAL.exe is explorer.exe. So that's interesting and another piece of information that we didn't previously know. So now I might do something like run malfind, which shows us evidence of hidden or injected code. Remember, we already have a few PIDs that we think aren't normal, some things that we actually want to look a little bit closer at. So let's see if malfind finds any of those same PIDs. Now, as always with malfind, there are going to be likely some false positives and smartscreen.exe is such false positive, so we can ignore that. But here we have one of those suspicious PIDs, 6172. And here's our 4D5A9000 or MZ header. So that is executable code in memory with no backed file on disk. So that is a little odd. And here we see that process again. As we scroll down, there's our SVC host.exe process that we thought was a little odd, PID 2300. Again, executable code is present here. And we see it repeated below, though that doesn't appear to be executable. And then here is our other malicious or potentially malicious file, PID 8988. And again, 8988 marked as executable. So clearly our suspicions are proving to be correct in that there's something not right with these. Malfind is showing them as evidence of hidden or injected code. So now I could go ahead and run proc dump and I could dump the actual process binary, in this case for 6172, to disk. So let's go ahead and dump PID 6172. And there we go, that's our executable directly from memory. I could use memdump to actually dump all of the process memory associated with it. But in this case, I'm dumping the process binary itself, 
We'll do the same for PID 2300. And then we'll also do the same for 8988. And you'll see where I'm going with this in a second. And again, I am just giving you a high level overview here. There are plenty of other walkthroughs in the playlist associated with this series, which I would strongly recommend you take a look at. But at this point, we can take one of these hashes and we can take it over to VirusTotal and actually search VirusTotal and see if we see anything associated with this hash. So let's try the first one. No matches. Okay. Well, we've got two other hashes. Let's see if there are any matches in VirusTotal for those. So let's grab this one and paste it. And let's see what we have here. Yep, I would say that is a good sign that something isn't right. 54 of 73 for our detection ratio. And you can see cut whale listed there, which as I mentioned earlier, is this particular malware. So clearly something evil here. So now let's take a look at that last PID and do the same thing. And by the way, in case you're wondering why I didn't just upload the binary itself, well, I could have done that, but just be careful with OPSEC. Even the hash may be an OPSEC issue. Just remember that if a malware author is looking to see if that particular variant of malware has been detected, they may in fact leverage VirusTotal. Because when you upload something to VirusTotal, you're providing information to the community and to anyone else who is using VirusTotal. So that would include potentially malware authors who are looking to determine whether or not their malware has been detected yet. So you may end up tipping your hand, so just keep operational security in mind. In this case, a hash is a little bit safer than uploading the binary itself. Now, of course, this is malware that's been in the wild for years, and I didn't really have to do that, but as a best practice, I went ahead and did so anyway. So to recap, we have taken a look at three different baseline plugins. We first looked at process BL, which immediately showed us several processes that were not in the baseline image, three of which we immediately thought might be suspicious based on some contextual information. Then we looked at service BL and saw numerous services that were different. We do not yet know if any of those are malicious and we would need to vet each one of them independently, not just assuming that because it's named correctly, it's legit. And then lastly, we looked at driver BL to look at our drivers. And in this case, there were no differences. So no drivers were installed in the infected image that weren't already installed in the previous clean image. But had there been any, we would have seen them there. And much like the services, we would need to vet each one. So that was the initial process we used. And then we took it a step further. We used our basic PS list plugin to take a look at the parent for some of the processes. And then we used Malfind to take a look at hidden and injected code. And that was interesting because the PIDs that we already thought were a little suspicious from process BL were identified within Malfind. So clearly we're on the right track there. And then lastly, we just went ahead and dumped those three suspicious process binaries using proc dump. Again, proc dump will dump the binary itself, whereas mem dump will dump all of the allocated process memory belonging to that process. But in this case, I wanted the binary itself. So we did that for each of those three PIDs. Then we took a SHA-1 hash of those, submitted it to VirusTotal, and two of the three of them got clearly significant hits that would point us in the right direction and tell us what kind of malware we're dealing with. Now again, this was a very quick walkthrough and example of these baseline plugins, but I hope that you'll see immediately the advantage to using baselining with our memory forensics analysis. So I hope you enjoyed this episode in the Introduction to Memory Forensics series. As I previously mentioned, there is an entire playlist of other videos in which we walk through this same process again using several other types of malware. So I would highly encourage you to take a look at that and as always, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I will catch you in the next episode.